Hello Mrs. Rubino, hello class, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, I wish I were there in person to, to talk to the class but uh, my mother is in the hospital and uh, I have to stay here, I'm sure you will understand. I am the only child so when my mother is ill I am the one to take care of her. And actually I am here to talk to you about immigration and my mother is part of my immigration process. Just picture that about uh, 52 years ago, or 53 years ago, in Cuba, communism came to the island, and my mother realized, and my, my father realized, that it was better for me not to live in a communist country. So they decided to send me to the United States. It was my mother's uh, initiative, it was my mother's motivation to take me out of that system and send me to the United States. So. My immigration story actually begins with my mother, and it's ironic that now I am taking care of her. If my mother had not sent me to the U.S., I would not be here today, and I would not have, uh, you know, advanced in my career and developed my family ties and so on in the, in the U.S. Immigration is a fascinating topic, and I am very happy that Mrs. Rubino is introducing you to it in, in class. Uh, immigration is really the fabric of America. Uh, all Americans come from somewhere. I'm sure that if you go home today and you ask your parents, what is our immigration story? You will, will hear a story about your great-grandparents or your great-great-grandparents coming from somewhere. Uh, in this country, in 1635, there was a massive European immigration. Most of the early immigrants were Swedes, Dutch, Germans, Danes, then the Irish, of course, the British, the Italians. Uh, people came to this country looking for a better life. Everyone who ever came here wanted to have a better life. In some cases they wanted freedom. They were persecuted for religious reasons, for political reasons, and of course some were adventurers. Some were people who really wanted to see the new world, discover it, and there will always be adventurers. And many of these adventurers really also became um, some of the most notable uh, immigrants ever to, came to, uh, to come to America. Uh, in my case, I fall into the category of what you call a refugee. A refugee is someone who comes to another country or to America escaping a political system that is oppressing them. So when communism came to Cuba, uh, close to one million Cubans left, mostly children. I came to America in the company of two little children whose parents were also sending them to Cuba. I was 14 years old at the time and I had on one hand uh, a 10 year old and to my left I had the 10 year old's 7 year old sister. Uh, this is a long time ago but that one day stays with me. That was the day that I arrived here and I remember going to my uncle's barber shop in Miami and not understanding anything anybody was saying. So you, you had the realization at the age of 14 that you had to learn a new language. This was a new life, this was a new language that you had to learn. But we all did. And we did it well and we adjusted. And that is what makes America different. I travel around the world. I'm a man who designs newspapers, so I go around the world uh, doing my work. I have worked in about 86 countries. Every time I come back, I feel like kissing the ground. There is no place uh, like America. And, and America is a place where immigrants blend very easily uh, into the system. As I said, we are the fabric of America. In many other countries, the immigrants remain into their own pockets. Whatever they are, they remain in their neighborhoods and so on. In America, we all sort of fall into the mainstream. That was the idea of the first immigrants who came to this country to create laws that were common to everybody and then to abide by those laws. And again, from time to time you hear awful stories about immigrants. Today in the, in the political context there is a lot of debate about uh, stopping immigration. Uh, I would say don't do that because immigration has contributed to what America is all about. Uh, all of us immigrants bring a gift to America. All of us bring a talent bring a skill, bring a desire to, to live in freedom that is really what makes America what it is. In my case, 
I design newspapers, I go around the world designing newspapers, and then I become an ambassador of America. Uh, I am showing you here some of the work that I do, magazines, newspapers, and in doing this work as an American, I show the world how wonderful America is. Everywhere I, everywhere I go, I talk about my country. I talk about the pride I have in this country. And, and believe me, uh, it is really a pride that perhaps the immigrants who come here feel stronger than the ones who are born here. I chose America to be my country, and I am forever grateful that America gave me the opportunities that it gave me. And as I said, it's, it's a matter of, of how you view the role of the immigrant. America needs the immigrants. America benefits from the immigrants. All of us bring a gift. In my case, um, in looking at your class, there is Max, my grandson. Uh, if I had not come to America, Max would not be there. And if Max would go home today and ask his mom, what is my background? He is very typical of what America is all about. There is a little German, a little Cuban, a little Spanish, a little Irish, and that is what makes Max what he is. But at the end of the day, Max is an American. I am an American. All of you are Americans, regardless of where you came from. But one thing is for sure, you have to keep your pride in what your background is. Uh, if your background is Irish, be proud of that. If your background is German, be proud of that. And perhaps there are some costumes at home, uh, some costumes that you, uh, uh, that you follow. Perhaps you, uh, once a year you celebrate uh, with food uh, or, or with music the background of your people. You can be uh, uh, a wonderfully authentic American and still um, uh, respect where you came from. Uh, I am very happy that I've been able to speak to you here today and if you have any questions give them to Mrs. Rubino, email me, find me in Facebook and I will be very happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you very much for listening and God bless.